You guys are in the stand corner. I've never even listened to the stand. Shut up! <laughs> You're roped into this. <laughs> You're now involved. So, all right. So, I mean, since this is your favorite album uh, ever, Lego Shi, that you wanted me to listen to, I'll let you do the introduction. Um, yeah. Honestly, it was. It's kind of hard to decide because, in some ways, Meteora by them also kind of ties with this at my number one spot. But I feel like this is probably the one that you and chat would get the most out of. So I think that you know it's going to be an interesting listen. It's a really conceptual record that is about. I guess at its core, it's about conflict and war, especially like the threat of nuclear conflict, and like just kind of like looking at like the frailty of life and the value of preserving it and just what it means to be human in times of conflict. Uh, the album title comes from, you know, the quote about the first nuclear bomb going off. Um, the cover art is just kind of abstract image, which the band have been very vague about the true meaning of, and have said it can mean whatever you want it to, although that there is a real meaning. I've always taken it as kind of like a flash of blinding light that is like beautiful but like terrifying and almost alien and kind of like represents this moment of like on one hand intense technological advancement that's like really admirable but also horrifying catastrophe because it's so destructive uh the album is sequenced to flow like one giant song that keeps evolving there is it is completely gapless playback um a few of the tracks are kind of designed to be listened to like like the first three tracks are designed to be listened to at once without stopping because it's one big song in three parts. Um, so we'll do that. We'll, we'll we'll do that. As someone who hasn't yeah. listened to any full Linkin Park albums, as this is going to be my introduction to their full albums, uh, what would mm -hmm. you have to say to me uh, going into this? This album was really controversial upon re controversial upon release because fans were like, "Oh, where's where's the heaviness? Where's the guitars?" They're all over this album, just in more textural ways. And I think this record is a great in-between point of things that they had done taken to a new level and also looking forward to things that they would do following this going forward. And so there are elements on this album where I can say, if you like this, you would definitely be able to go back and draw appreciation for their previous material. And there's stuff on here where I'd say, look at what came after this. You'll find expanded versions of that. Um, it's like a really atmospheric kind of like industrial art rock album, I guess, if I had to explain it. So, yeah. Now, I'm excited to jump into this. So, Peruko, this is your first uh, full-length Linkin Park listen as well. How familiar are you with the band? I know they made the one song that goes like, I've got so far. And, and, you know, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's all I know about Linkin Park. <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> it seems like me and you, Peruko, are in a pretty similar space. I mean, I know a little bit more about them, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited to check this out. I've been sent in singles here and there throughout the years of Linkin Park songs. I feel like they're one of the better acts to have aged in this era, as it seems like they really took their music very seriously. And they were innovating on what they were doing, and they have a very distinct sound. Uh, that no one's really, I feel like, truly captured uh, since. So, you know, I already respect the band in that uh, regard. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited to go in and see, I, I guess, the content uh, of these albums, uh, specifically A Thousand Sons, and I appreciate the information going into it. Uh, with that being said, I think we should get started with The Requiem. And as you say... Shall I just briefly explain this song? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yep. So... The first three tracks are designed to be played back to back without stopping. The Requiem and the Radiance are these ambient passages. The the first one of which has a verse which is kind of like the central tenet of the album, which is repeated later on towards the end. Uh, and it just kind of is like an in media res opening that almost feels like you are standing inside the explosion of a nuclear bomb going off for the first time. And it's just this kind of almost... Lovecraftian otherworldliness and just this incomprehensible terror and existential fear. Uh, the Radiance, again, is like another kind of like post industrially ambient track, which contains a sample of uh, Oppenheimer speaking about the first nuclear bomb going off. 
and just this moment of silence and like awe that came with it it then flows into the first real song which is burning in the skies which kind of jumps back to the beginning prior to any of this nuclear fallout and kind of sets the stage of a world which is on the brink of rising tension as people kind of become caught up in their own problems and worry about the future of their day-to-day lives uh reflecting on how we as a species are continually burning bridges that we should be seeking to preserve so so basically this album and, so basically yeah. this album is uh, fa infinity by godspeed you black emperor pretty much i have not heard the album in full to really give so a you're admitting solid... that it is the same exact thing uh, no. Peruko, what do you have to say about this these are the suggested albums for the wawaka wawaka uh yes i'm aware cory feldman's there yes the cory feldman panic at the disco for a long time charlie xcx chris cornell there's a view all option Blurry Face, Weezer, Ratitude, all Panic at the Disco albums, Imagine Dragons, Arctic Monkeys. Uh, well, okay, uh, okay, Brad, you like the album. Which, what would you say? Do you agree with these? I mean, yeah, as a huge Maroon Five fan, I think that uh, that it's very uh, that there's a lot of crossover. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get started with the first song, The Requiem. Here we go. Just let things play until Burning in the Skies finishes its best experience that way. The car is on fire, and there's no driver at the wheel. Thank you, Sophia. And the sewers are all muddied with a thousand lonely suicides. This summer. <laughs> do we get more shoes with Peruka and Legacy? Yep, there's more stuff to do, then I don't see why not. I've, I've enjoyed this a lot. What you could do for your country. Two oh, people wait. laughed. So that backwards. Two people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And DJ Kelly! takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Oh yeah, that. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Good intro, starting it off, building a lot of tension. All right, let's see where it goes. Burning in the skies. Oh. Oh. There is like a groove going on already with like the intro to it had it. Oh. 
Wait, hold on. Burning in the Bernie in disguise. Bernie in disguise. Guys, I think I cracked it. <laughs> I use the dead wood to make the fire rise. Of innocence burning in the skies. I filled my cup with the rising. Shockingly ambitious for a mainstream band. So is this going to just transition into the next song, Empty Spaces? Yeah. Okay, so this first little segment, I think, actually does a good job at setting it up in an interesting way. Now, I'm not super in love with everything in terms of the production here, as it, I, I just feel like there is a little bit to it that does sound a bit dated, but I, I genuinely just don't really care too much about that, um, as I think that this is well thought out, and it's engaging and interesting. It's a smiley ball for me. I think it's a good start. In some ways, I like. I, I mean, I don't think it's outdated, but I, I guess if I had to like play devil's advocate for that, I like that aspect because then it really plays into the whole. Because this album's from 2010, it really mm, transports you to that point in time and like makes you feel firsthand the kind of like fears about war and conflict and nuclear disaster that were prevalent then and obviously still are nowadays. But like, you get to experience that point in times 
specific like take on it. Yeah, I I, I completely understand. Empty spaces into where uh, where they come from. Me and it's it's fine. Boring. It's kind of boring. Yo, Peruko oh, um, thinks that it's boring. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, if you want to go ahead, Peruko, if you were saying anything. It, it, it's just kind of boring as all. Well. I don't know. I was listening to like all three tracks, and it's just not doing anything for me. I don't know. I mean, this is definitely a very different album for them, so perhaps you'd find more to appreciate about like their more explosive material that came before and sometimes after this. Uh, th this is like a, a detour for them, even though it feels like it couldn't have come from any other band. Um, this next track, uh, I mean, Empty Spacious is just like a brief interlude with some samples of um, soldiers shouting, going to war. But the main song, When They Come For Me, has this really like militaristic stomp to it and it feels like soldiers preparing to go off to conflict i feel like the um, song waiting for the end is probably a reference to the fact that the fans are waiting for the song the end in this album and then it never comes <laughs> um yeah but uh yeah so w w when they come for me is kind of like uh just because you can do something doesn't mean you should it kind of like within the context of the war concept is like people are always trying to outdo one another building bigger weapons finding out more destructive ways to like win conflicts and how being at the forefront of that and being the standard bearer isn't always a good thing because it leads to people copying you and potentially following in your footsteps and doing something so much worse that could just be the end of everything as you know it okay When do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? That is the music! They song When They Come For Me. Legacy, we're Linkin Park trying to make a political statement for a certain cause in the same way that American Idiot by Green Day was a reaction against the Bush, uh, Bush administration. I think partially. Uh, I need to double check that one, but I recall reading something about that at the time, yeah. American Idiot was a political message? Yes. <laughs> as shocking as that seems. I actually love... So, I think that this is such a creative and interesting sonic direction for the band to go. Like, because all I've heard is, like, the mainstream stuff, but, like, this is just such an interesting detour. I actually really understand the appeal and understanding and the love for this album already, uh, Lego She Just, like, because it is. It's so different from what I'm used to. Yeah. Um... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say... Uh... Something I find interesting about this song is that although this album came out like three years beforehand, this song almost feels like Black Skinhead by Kanye with the tribal drums mixed with these like grinding synths and industrial sounds. And I, I remember people 
talking about that song being like wow this is like nothing i've ever heard before and when i heard black skinhead i thought this is an incredible song but this is just kind of like what lincoln park did three years ago in a lot of ways i mean this is definitely not unique and like because i i know it's not how do i say it lincoln park didn't invent this style at all in the same yeah. way that kendrick or not kendrick kanye didn't invent it on black skinhead either they're both deriving from something. I just wish I had a reference point because I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I remember hearing about it. Uh, but yeah. Wait, that's because Rick Rubin was producer of both albums? Oh shit, there you go. Rick Ross Rubin coming through. <laughs> Said it increased the complication. Kane said, Don't step, I ain't the one. Chuck said, An oozy way of motherfucking tongue. And DJ Gavin! They taught me, rocking every stage and every place that they brought me. I'm awfully underrated, but pivot to correct it. And so it ain't mistaken, I'ma say that for the record, I am the opposite of whack, opposite of weak, opposite of slack, sending them a heat, sending them a crack, close to a peak, far from a bug. Y'all ought to stop talking, start trying to catch up, motherfucker. And all the people say Yeah, I love the sound of this one. I thought that was an amazing uh, track for this project. I like the fact that it's early on, too. I feel like it's helping set the setting very well. Um, a great follow-up to the first uh, moment of the song. It's a smiley ball for me. I'm actually super satisfied and really impressed with the direction they're taking this. I'm a lot more creative than I expected, so, yeah. Someone yeah, said Arab really Money. Neat. I'm going to click the button. I'm gonna click the... Uh, no, Arab Money is... No! No! <laughs> <laughs> what what's the problem as someone half arab i forbid you from using that sample ever again oh okay uh, that song was no <laughs> <laughs> that song was decent as I guess. someone who's I as someone whose step grandfather was black i think i'm allowed to use the button but that has nothing to do with anything. Hey! I'm I'm, I'm simply not even going to acknowledge what you just said, Brad. <laughs> it's okay. I live in my own echo chamber. I don't need it. I don't need either of you. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Next song, Robot Boy. You got any context for this one? Uh, yeah, this one is kind of sung in. It's like it's addressing someone who's like who seems to be like a soldier that has been completely numbed and desensitized from like years of conflict and war, and they're at the point where even if they don't fight anymore, they simply have lost all like faith or hope for humanity as a whole. And the song is kind of reaching out to them to encourage them that, you know, even at our absolute lowest, even when the bad does outnumber the good, there's always a reason to keep going and believe that people can get better and find a reason to, like, make things right, no matter how bad they get. And it's about, like, rediscovering your own humanity in a way. Peruko, I know. Hold on, hold on. Dynamic says, uh, Peruko, I know you're not getting much out of this album, but there are there any elements that you particularly like or dislike here? I think the production on the last song was pretty neat, but overall, I'm just kind of not feeling like overall like that connected with it. I just think it's kind of fine. It's not been special. That's all. When I was in jail, I was low key. Shadow just supported that road. When I was in. I'm only human after all. I'm only human <laughs> after all. Don't put your blame on me. DJ Khaled has a verse in this song.
Okay, we'll let it play out this interlude. Oh, uh, no, you should you should stop, actually, because this one sets up the next track. Oh, okay, never mind then. Well, I, at least it's nice to know their transitions, at least in some way. Yeah. Um, I didn't love the song, uh, honestly. I didn't like it as nearly as much as I did the last one, but I, a lot of it just comes down to the sound of it, just kind of sounding a bit tacky and definitely reeks of, like, early 2010s, late 2000s. When did this song come out? 2010. Oh, well, there you go. It just sounds... Because, I mean, I did a top 100 hits ranked of, like, this year, and it reminded me a lot of the shit that came out this year. Uh, just, like, especially at the end there with the synths. Um, but I still overall respect what it's trying to do. It's just one that I feel like is just sort of out of personal taste. I wasn't really loving it. Ah, that's fair enough. Uh, I know Peruko is AFK at the moment, so I'm not entirely sure if she would have any thoughts on it, but... All right, so uh, Granada uh, del Muerto. So um, this song is another kind of like ambient interlude track, which then flows into Waiting for the End. Uh, Granada del Muerto is the name of the desert where the first nuclear bomb was tested. And it literally translates as Day of the Dead, which feels fitting for an album about war and death. Uh, the Japanese lyrics translate as lift me up and let me go which is a repeated motif that comes back towards the end of the album um and then waiting for the end which it flows into is this much more it, it it's not that this song is unrelated to the concept of the record it is but it feels a lot more intimate and rather than necessarily addressing the whole big global scale conflict issues it's more about like the feeling of like isolation and giving up in the face of this oncoming future that just feels like too much to bear but also desperately trying to cling on to some kind of hope and reason to live through it, whatever happens. All right, here we go. Notice how no one's saying you're over-explaining for this album. It's so funny, right? I, yeah. I called it. <laughs> it's exactly, you're right, no. And like I said, it's like it's just because it's something they don't like the sound of, you know? Mm -hmm. Jacqueline, I told you he was going to feature. Oh my god, I hate introducing everybody. Alright, let's see if it lives up to the uh, to Khaled hype. Waiting for the end. Oh. Say what? Say what? Thoughts were spinning in my head 
pause, this is great. My attic says, I'm realizing all the regional influences in this album are like encompass, uh, encompassing how nuclear war is like a global war. That's a really great Yeah, that's that's oh. a great point. I completely forgot to bring that up. Thank you, Tass. That's really appreciated. Wow. Good, Good shit. I'd enjoy this a lot more if it wasn't an obvious rip off of Tony Pilots. Oh, oh, Wait till you hear the mashup of this runaway by Kanye. Oh my god. That was beautiful. That was so powerful. That is like up there in terms of like best Linkin Park songs I've heard, period. That is amazing. It's a strong nine for me. I'm really glad you like that one. That's uh, one that has like always meant a lot to me. Uh, that one Might really, I be the sorry. contrary in this stream? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Perico. I think this is like a solid six. It's fine. I'm not the biggest fan of some of the vocals. <laughs> it's all right Somewhere to be the... wrong sometimes. What do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm fine. You know, no, you're allowed to be wrong. Just like no, how... I'm, I'm factually correct. <laughs> Chat, back me up. Chat, what do you got to say? What do you guys think? Song is so good, but I'm a contrarian, so it's a 2 out of 10. Peruko, never wrong. Yo, Joshua's got your back, though. That's all that matters. Joshua's always got my back. Uh, I like this song. I think it's powerful. I think it reeks to the 2010s, for sure, but I don't really have a problem with that. Especially not when I really is good. think about that, honestly, when listening to this, or just any music. But, I mean, that could just be me. Like, uh, Also, like this album always makes me exceedingly emotional, and this song, in particular, combined with one of the other ones that comes later, so... Disagreeing I, with know, Peruko is transphobic. What do you have to say about that, Legoshi? Uh, I, <laughs> uh um, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, Legoshi, I think it's time to change your stance. All right, seriously, it's time to it's time to be the be the bigger person. All right. But um, yeah, I'm 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 especially happy at the very least that you enjoyed that song. So. Oh, I love that. That was, that was, when I was, that was so to good. Your reaction to. Oh, man. I mean, that ending, too. It's just so powerful. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's gorgeous. Like, I could feel it. Like, I just felt 
Like, like you know how, like, because I've never cried before, because I'm not gay, you know? But if I did cry, it might be to that song. No. I think I've lost track of the amount of times I've cried to that song or just their music in general, so, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's, it's almost happening right now. I'm just trying to not let that happen, so. Yes, thank you for pulling up the quote. Exactly. I was going to cry, but I'm not because I'm not gay. Red headphones. I thought you were gay. Dog. I'm not gay. I'm sorry. Sorry to disappoint everybody, but I'm actually a straight white male. They're trying to cancel and get rid of me. Straight white male. All right, shut up, Tom. <laughs> Next song, Blackout. What do you have to say about this one, Lego? Um, sorry. Um, uh, this song kind of like uh takes things back to a more wider reaching perspective and it's kind of like this really as the song goes on it just degrades and degrades and gets more like furious and dark and kind of just feels like this like global viewpoint of things falling apart and like a literal like blackout like socially culturally and just watching like the world fall apart and the self-sabotaging nature of people in times like this uh sorry I, i'm i'm kind of like sad after the last one so yeah understandable i i get it no that one that one really struck me so you know again if you want to just kind of you want me to just take over and you let me know when you're when you're good we can do that yeah um this is a unique song at least on the album because it's one of the few in their discography where mike schnoder and chester kind of swap roles so chester is kind of like semi rapping the verses and then mike comes in at the end and just does entirely sung vocals in the bridge uh it, it, it it's really good so yeah all right blackout here we go whoa 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 Squidward on a chair. Pokemon ass synth. It sounds good though. One of my other favorite bands of all time, so. Bro nah, dude. Of course, the, you hear it. Take it, take it, take it. And you want to say, I'm trying. I'm trying to sleep. It's true. I can't stand Tyler Joseph's voice, so. Thank you. Oh, my God. I knew you were based, Peruko. Thank you. Holy shit. Finally, someone said it besides me. <laughs> okay. You think you know me. Oh, it 
literally is dubstep. I mean, is this not just Proto 100 yet? Interesting that you mention that. Do not mention that terrible remix they did. I mean, they, I, did, I hated their remix album of their first project, or their first album. Like, I gave that thing like a four. I don't think 100 Gex are indestructible. So the person saying Young and Menace vibes, you're not Yes, wrong. I that's agree. That, that's, that song is so good, by the way. That's a 10 out of 10. Hybrid theory of a dead man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Blackout had some some of the most interesting parts of the song so far. Like, again, the role reversal, I think, is a really creative and interesting thing to do. But I also thought the dubstep sounded horrible. Uh, and, I, and I genuinely felt uh, ill listening to that part. But honestly, besides that, the song is okay. Shrug. And I appreciate the gimmick and weirdness of it, even though I think it kind of didn't work. Huge W. Huge W? Yeah, huge W. Peruko calls this song a huge W? I agree, it is. Desu, desu. Desu, desu? Yeah, exactly. All right. Wretches and Kings, what's the story behind this one? Uh, This one is pretty much just a painting the picture of an uprising of people having like decided that the way things are going is simply not acceptable and like rising up to overthrow the government in question in this like dystopian world before it reaches the point of no return but obviously the whole idea is that it's already kind of in motion all right operation of the machine becomes so odious makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part you can't even passively take part and you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. Oh. Chocolate starfish! Just one of those days where you don't want to wake up. Everybody sucks! Everything sucks! Yeah! To save face! How low can you go? Chuck a lot of game, but yet you okay. don't know. Static on the way, make us all say, whoa. The people up top, push the people down low. Get down and obey every word. Steady getting mine if you haven't yet heard. Wanna take what I got, don't be absurd. No, fight the power, nobody gets hurt. If you haven't heard yet, then I'm letting you know. There ain't shit, we don't run when the guns unload. And no one make a move, unless my people say so. Got everything out of control. I like the Chuck, uh, Chuck D reference. Fuck all you hoes! Feel a lord, find a road! We the animals take control! Hey! Shit and yet you don't know Fire on the way make you all say whoa 
the people up top and the people down low get down and I'm running it like that the front of the attack is exactly where I'm at somewhere in between the kick and the high hat the pin and the contract the pitch and the contact so get with the combat I'm letting them know there ain't shit you can say to make me back down no so push the button let the whole thing go spinning everything out of control now everybody go Fucking fire. This is like before DJ Mustard too, bro. It's innovative. <laughs> I put the new Fortis on the Jeep. From the front to the back and the side to side. If you feel exactly Joshua. Our planet, don't nuke the earth. But you Yeah, this is this is good new metal. I, I fuck with it. Good shit for the era. I mean, seriously, that that went unbelievably hard. I like how dark it sounded. I thought it was a, a wonderful combination of of styles here. It's a smiley ball. Uh, one of my favorites, actually. Just one, it's I think that for sure. yeah, it just it goes hard. It goes so unbelievably hard, and I think that it's aged decently well too. So, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, this beat this is, beat not is hard. so hard. This beat is not no, hard. it is, it is the hard. Beat is very hard, Peruka. You weren't moving yeah. to that shit. No, Bruh. Explain yourself. I can explain myself all you want. It, it's just a matter of the fact that, you know, I have a better ear than you guys, and I can see right through this Linkin Park shit. Okay, well, I'm going to lower the score on the Wawaka album. I, no, I feel like I've... No, actually, I love this Linkin Park album. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. See, that's what I thought. All right. Next song, Wisdom, Justice, and Love. Uh, what do you have to so... say? So... This is supposed to be played back to back with the following track, Iridescent. Um, this one is a sample of Martin Luther King, and Who? it is kind of like it just kind of ties together like the emotions and themes of the record. Um, and oh wait, sorry, did, did I, I? I just realized what you said. My bad. <laughs> um, as the sample goes on, it starts like looping, and then right at the end, the vocals get increasingly distorted, and it kind of like. It's supposed to just symbolize this is the point in the album where like tensions are at their highest and this whole nuclear conflict is literally about to explode and the vocals get more warped and robotic as if to like exemplify a loss of humanity right before the worst possible decision is made, which is the dropping of the bomb. Um and then and so you're against into... the dropping of the bomb. I I I, I, I... <laughs> I do not encourage <laughs> nuclear warfare. Okay. I'm all um, for it. Well, hey, I'm, well, then I'm going to drop the score of, so, the, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be dropping, dropping the score of the Will Walk album. I'm sorry, Perico. You know how wait, what, wait, so no. Then, but you said so you're into flows, nuclear warfare, and oh. I assume it's because you listen to Will Walk, right? I mean. How would that do anything? Japan literally got nuked twice. Well, 
Well, they're about to get nuked three times, so I'm going to give the album a zero. Oh my god, I shouldn't have said that. I can't... I was like, okay, I'm going to say this, and it's so bad, but I'm just going to, like, swallow my dignity and say it, and I said it. Wow. I can't believe I said that. Well, well, well maybe we'll strike back in Pearl Harbor again. <laughs> Pearl Harbor, Kendrick Lamar's album, and give it a zero. Fuck it. Keep it butterfly, zero. Too much edge, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, th this track kind of like is the build up to the complete loss of humanity and like the darkest point of the record, and then it flows into iridescent, which is supposed to literally be like it kind of like picks up where the beginning of the album showed us. It's like a point right during like the dropping of the bomb and the explosion, just like that moment of the entire world just freezing in fear, and all. On one hand, it's terrifying and like alienating, and it feels like everything that we've accomplished has just been for nothing. But there's just also this kind of moment of unity in the song because it's like for for once the whole world is united in agreement that this is like the worst possible outcome and that we can't yeah. allow this to occur anymore. And so it's kind of like a really dark but also optimistic song. So yeah, just these two tracks back to back and then we'll pause. And you said this is a speech by Major Larry King? That's absolutely what I said. <laughs> I said Martin Luther King, that guy from the hit album Justice? How did they get that feature? I don't know, they must have paid him. You know, a good bag. You haven't heard my thoughts on nuclear warfare yet. Um, I don't believe that it ever happened, just like Blue Land. So it's the guy from Fortnite. <laughs> So are they going to remix him and turn him into Martin Luther Dubstep? No. The car is on fire. See you, Mark. Cannot be reconciled with wisdom, justice, and love. Iridescent. If you go to T-Mobile, you can buy two phones for the price of one. Fetch it.
bet Peruko's falling asleep right now. He's probably passed out at the computer. Oh, they unmuted shit. Huh? Me, 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 me. <laughs> drum solo in the back. Everyone knows that I am gay, but does everyone know that you are more gay than me? So good, I wish gay people were real. Yeah, me too. I think it's really good. It's a smiley ball. I think it's an emotional opus that works pretty well at the second, uh, at kind of the closing leg of this album. Um, yeah, as it feels like an emotional dump. I mean, not that kind of dump, you know. Uh, but some people, in, some people in chat think it's that kind of dump, but I don't. I think. I do. Yeah, of course, Peruko does, but. I don't know, man. Okay, it's, I'm, it's charming. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best with this uh, album, but like, it's just not clicking with me. That's fair. And, and before anyone tears me apart, I am trying. So I if mean, you try Bruco to tear Chat me is... apart, I will tear you apart. Bruco, I am no like one's gonna like wolf. boo you for that because no, that's I... me. Excuse me. Don't steal my title. A woo. A woo. A woo. Uh, no one's going to disagree with you, Peruko, because chat is being, like, shockingly negative about this so far, so... Um, weird. It's weird that I'm more positive than chat on this, but, uh, but I'm actually... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that this is, like, one of the best songs ever written. Uh, like... I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but, you know... I mean, I think it's the greatest album of all time. I mean, it's a pretty good so, album. I, I won't even say I don't think it's a bad album. I mean, it wouldn't be my personal pick, but you know, I'm glad I'm glad you vibe with it. My personal would yeah, be I, uh, would be Swans soundtracks for the blind. It, you ever heard of that album? Uh, Hello, Lego. She, you blind. awake? Hello. I think he's out. Hold on, Lego. You good? Uh, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just mentioned Swans, and then and you just disappeared for a second. Like like. You yeah, well, you you could say I blacked out. I guess. You blacked out MIDI? I'm done. I, I give up. I give up. Next song, Fallout. Um, Boy? So, yes. um, wow. okay, so this one is supposed to be played with the following track, The Catalyst. Uh, this is going into the final act of the album. Uh, the lyrics in the song are the lyrics from the verse of Burning in the Skies, so it kind of ties it back to the beginning of the album. Oh, yeah. And they start out with the same like distortion that Wisdom, Justice, and Love ends with, but then the distortion fades away as if to like kind of symbolize like humanity like recognizing the error of like how badly things have gone and like the error of our ways and 
recognizing that we need to now come together to undo this and prevent anything like this ever happening again. Um, and then the catalyst is kind of like taking a look at just the state of everything around the world in the wake of this like uh, destruction and also brings back the chorus from the opening track, uh, the, the, the Requiem. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually somewhat the neutral party here. You're right. This album so far for me is like Strong 7. I actually like it. I appreciate what it's trying to do. But I'm not like head over heels for everything. still going yeah not only is the stream still going but i plan on streaming for probably another six hours next song the catalyst in life there's people that hustle in life there's people that grind and there's we the best music In life, DJ Khaled. Use the drum machine. Especially with, like you said, things getting more robotic.
now the lyrics in this bridge are the translated lyrics from the Leonardo del Mar, so it's really good. That's on this album, pretty bad. Jack convinced me that I didn't like it. I'm so glad they put out this album and it ended all wars. pretty far so we had uh so there's a problem i was like all right guys let's continue the album i hit play on spotify and i was like oh wait a second they were listening through my stream so we're back ladies and gentlemen a regular scheduled plan i'm gonna go back about a minute in the song migos mambo I agree, restart the album, to be honest. DJ Khaled! Smile the ball. Good song. I like it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a great penultimate track, and just kind of it kind of like with that Wasp Park album we did before. It's like you could almost take this as a finale in itself, the way that it's positioned them covers things. Yeah, it. I, I agree. It feels very much like a, a very final feeling track, like a like a finale of a sort. So, yeah, yeah, good. Uh, good wave. But that final song. The messenger. Uh, this final song is kind of like, again, sort of like an epilogue type track and sort of jumps forward in time to some point in the future after all of the disaster and death and misery of the rest of the record story and is a point where things are being rebuilt. Uh, people are rising out of the ashes and kind of like able to stand with one another and work to build the better tomorrow that wasn't possible before when the world was so focused on conflict. Okay. Uh, this one is maybe my favorite on the album. It's incredibly heartbreaking though, so yeah. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. <laughs> when you feel your Cut off from this cruel world Your instinct's telling you to run Listen to your heart Those angel voices 
faces. They'll say to you, they'll be your guide. Back home when life leaves us blind. Love keeps us kind. It keeps us kind. Wait, hold on. When ARTV first reviewed this, he gave it a 0. 0.5 out of 5. Wait. Wow. He said uh, ARTV has like one good take a year, so I wouldn't take his word for anything on this. He says it's complete crap complete, uh, compared to uh, Meteora and Hybrid Theory and even Minutes to Midnight. It's a complete disgrace to the band. And then it seemed that 20 years later changed it from a 1 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10. That's the one you can take. Yeah, wow, dude. When you suffer enough and your spirit is breaking, you're growing desperate from the fight. Remember your love and you always will be. This Yeah, that felt like the hurt of the album. Yeah, very much so. That's a great comparison. I thought it was great. I thought it was just a super painful, emotional, uh, gut-wrenching, 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 God, closer to this project. Um, yeah, and honestly, uh, yeah, honestly, it's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's just a flawless album all the way through, honestly. Like, there's nothing bad I can say about it. I could write like a essay on how good this thing is and all the layers behind it. Adding up my final score. I would give it a five. Out of five, I agree. Yeah. No, out of ten. Oh, five out of four. Yeah, I agree. It is nil. <laughs> okay. Yeah, honestly, uh, I feel yeah, it's surprising, but I actually think that this is uh, it's actually a pretty good piece of work. Feeling an eight minus on this project. Um, yeah, I gotta say, for my first full Linkin Park album, I honestly think that this is quite great. Um, there was no real tracks in here that I necessarily hated, but I just very much appreciate the risks they took. Um, I might, I wouldn't be surprised if I found this to be more interesting than some of their like more praise, but like. Uh, more mainstream works but it's just even the context of this of how rare it is for a band especially since they released what people considered like around their peak right or like 2003 they followed it up like seven years later with such a with such a left turn but i think that they pull it off i really do i'm sure i think that's dated or it's aged uh a bit but i don't know i think the idea is really uh they poke through and i thought it was a great listen so yeah, I didn't mind it at all. I'm, I'm glad.
And I think Peruko uh, doesn't shower. 